Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Be seated. So we're competing with traffic a little bit today, it sounds like. The world goes on, and yet we withdraw and come into this space in consideration of a special season, a special time. And I'm so glad that each of you have taken the time today to come and give yourself to uh, the start of a holy Lent. Now there has been a phenomenon that has been sweeping the internet as of late. And that's uh, um, videos of people who are Marie Kondoing, who are doing the big cleaning bit, who are downsizing, who are asking the question, does this bring me joy? And if it does not, they get rid of it. This is actually uh, uh, the latest in uh, a phenomenon of minimalism of going through and trying to clean out the place in which we live, to simplify things. And it's built on this idea that if you have things, there comes a point when you don't own them, they own you. And each of the things that you own, you actually have to invest a lot of energy in to keep it in its right place, to keep it so that it has a place. And at some point in time, as you keep getting more stuff, you have to ask the question, is it time to take some things to the curb? Or is it time to build bigger barns so that I have a place to store all my stuff? Well, there's a parable in the gospel about building bigger barns. And it does not work out so well for the gentleman as God demands his life from him on that very hour. But there's a, a principle that goes well with Lent here. And that is this idea that clutter can get in the way of things that are good, or best, I should say. Oftentimes, we have things that are good, or we do things that are good, that keep us from doing the things that are best. So what is the principle by which we can take an inventory of the things of our life? How can we clean up the mess? Or how can we take what is good and trade it for what is best? And there are a couple of questions that might come into play, similar to Marie Kondo's, does this bring me joy? They are, does this bring glory to God? Does this build God's kingdom and advance God's kingdom here on earth? Is this loving toward my brother or my sister? So these are just some of the questions that you might have in your head as you're engaging in this Lenten discipline. As you're looking at your life and trying to decide what is good, what's a mess, and what is best. And then feeding your energy into that which is best. But this takes place not in the realm of stuff, although stuff is a good place to look, perhaps first. Because we are material beings, and when we look at things, when we look at things materially, it gives us a, a, a picture of what we can do spiritually. So, to begin with, it's hard to clean up your life if you can't clean up your room, or your kitchen, or your living room, or whatever place that may be. 
that to have order in a material way helps us to have order in a spiritual way. Because those material things, though you may not fully understand it, though I may not fully understand it, when I walk into a messy room, I get a heavy spirit. These things can weigh you down over time. They take your energy. But then they also serve as a parable for the spiritual life. And this happens on a variety of fronts, and I want to talk about three today. And the first front is on the individual front. That we are creatures of habit. That we do the same things day by day, week by week, year by year. It's just how we operate. I find great comfort in my habits. I also am greatly limited in my growth, or sometimes my growth is greatly enhanced by the habits that I practice. So, for instance, I have a habit of silencing my alarm in the morning and not getting out of bed as promptly as I should right now. Perhaps we all have those kind of couch potato habits where there's something that we know that we need to do that would make the world around us a little better, that would make us a little better, and yet that show is on that is kind of intriguing. I don't really like it, but it passes the time really well. You know, we have those moments where we just don't want to engage where we just cannot get moving. Inertia is a hard thing to break loose. How do you start? By doing it once. How long does it take to invent or to, to, for something to become a tradition in the Episcopal Church? <laughs> well, I found out when we did the Christmas, Christmas Eve pageant, um, we historically had always done it on Christmas Eve, but then I went back and I looked in the books and it turned out that there was one year where Christmas Eve and the fourth Sunday of Advent happened on the same day. And we had the Christmas Eve pageant on the fourth Sunday of Advent, and then after that we had it on Christmas Eve. It just took the one year <laughs> before it was a tradition. That's actually how habits form. It forms with just doing something one time and then doing it again and doing it again. And before long, it is something that you crave because it's part of your daily ritual, your weekly ritual. You feel something's missing if you don't do it. And so you bring those questions. Does sleeping in a little bit, does that it help me to be a better follower of Jesus? Does it help me to advance the kingdom of God? Is it being, being, bringing glory to God or being loving to my neighbor? Maybe the answer is yes, because you stayed up till midnight the night before, and in order to not bite somebody's head off, you need to sleep a little extra. But then you're making that decision for the right reason. So what are those individual things that we can give up or we can take on that we can become our best selves as disciples of Jesus? The next thing is taking an inventory on a little broader scale, and that is our personal relationships. You know, we all have one of those relationships that's just kind of on the rocks. And we don't want to be the first one to break loose and to make it better. We don't want to be the first one to go and say I'm sorry or extend that invitation for a coffee or for lunch. Or maybe it's a neglected relationship and you're, you're like, wow, I really used to like 
spending time with Joe, but we just don't talk anymore. But I'm really thinking about him right now. I'm really thinking about Marie right now. I wonder how she's doing. We all have those relationships that are not the best that they could be. Maybe they're a bit of a mess because we're not saying things honestly in those relationships. Maybe there's some forgiveness that needs to be given or asked for in a relationship. Maybe we're not being patient like we should. But in relationships, too, we can ask these questions. In this relationship, am I being loving to a brother or sister? Am I bringing glory to God by being my best self? Am I being forgiving and patient as God is forgiving and patient? We just read from Joel and we heard about how God is very patient with this problematic people of Israel. But you know what? All of us are problematic from time to time. And patience is a great gift we can give to one another. In this relationship, am I looking to pick a fight? I know there are people on Twitter now that all they're doing is trolling around looking for fights to pick. They're looking for somebody to make the slightest misstep so that they can just cut them off at the knees. Is that the way we want to be? Or do we want to extend grace the way that people extend grace to us or the way that we hope that people will extend grace to us? Relationships. It's a good point to reflect on as we consider cleaning house in Lent. And the other is at a community level. You know there are a lot of things that we like to complain about at a community level. And it's easy to complain about things that you're not personally responsible for. It's kind of like watching the Cowboys game and trying to uh, at quarterback from your armchair about the stupid things that Jason Garrett's doing. Right? It's easy easy to make the hard call when you're not responsible for the hard call. You don't have to deal with the consequences. But I wonder if we change that thought process just a little bit and rather talk about the dumb decisions that our leaders make in our community or that this organization's leader is making or that organization or maybe your church, the, the leader of your church is maybe making a stupid decision to turn that on its head a little bit and to say, I wonder how I can make St. Mark's, Irving Cares, the city of Irving, a little bit more like God's kingdom. I wonder what part, what God is doing in this community and how I can participate in that. I wonder how I can advance the principles of love and forgiveness in the circles in which I walk. I wonder what responsibility I am actually being called to carry as I go about my daily life. How can I make things better? And that's a little different kind of engagement, right? One of the things we're studying right now is Niebuhr's Christ in culture. And there's been this tradition in the church that either culture is this insanely evil thing that the church has to fight against, or the church, or the culture is something that is ordained by God, and the church has to just go along with what's going on in culture. Um, there's actually middle grounds to those things. And that we are actually called 
to live as members of God's kingdom in a culture that is not God's kingdom necessarily, but in a culture that was made by God. Because God has given us all the things that we have in our relationships, all the know-how and whatnot to build up the community. But the Bible is not an instruction book on how to develop municipal practices. And yet, so much of what is in the Bible is required to having good municipal practices. To be forgiving. To be charitable. To give people the benefit of the doubt. To seek to make the world a better place wherever you are. Without these things, the fabric of society itself breaks down. So as we engage in our communities and in organizations, how can we make them to operate more like God's kingdom? How can we glorify God by being God's representative in that sphere? And then taking an inventory intentionally in our Lenten time about how we can go about that better. And so this day I commend to you to take an inventory, to ask these questions on an individual, personal relationship and community level about how you can be a better disciple, a better follower of Jesus in each of these areas. And then to just step out, get off the couch, make a change one day at a time, one habit at a time, praying that God will sustain you and give you wisdom and will help you be the best you that you are called to be. Because you were made by God to fill a particular space with a particular calling. God has a plan for you. God will help you to accomplish that to which you're called. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.